Okay, just to review, I have my sketches where my five different ideas of opposites and then my three variations. And then the first step is to make the cup and the saucer and then to also think about your theme. So I'm gonna be demonstrating today what I've done. Um, not so much the sculpting. Here's my little tortoise. There he is, there he is, right there. So there's my little tortoise. Um, but I'm gonna talk about doing a slab mug. So there's my hair hanging on to the cup. And so I'm gonna be talking more about how to do the slab cup and saucer, which you guys kind of know from the previous assignment. Um, but I'll just talk a little bit more about it. And um, I did create a couple saucers, um, but I liked the circle the best. So I'm dealing with opposites. So I liked that it went from round to square and to square and back to round. And then I also created it smooth and I liked it more with texture. I still have some things to resolve. I feel like the cup isn't that balanced, that it tips this way a little bit. And so I need to add some more clay here so that it holds up just a little bit more. And then also my turtle does not fit onto my saucer where I wanted it. So maybe I'll tuck it under here, have it go out there, or maybe I'll make a little brownie plate for it. And my uh, tortoise will be on the brownie plate. So stay tuned for instructions. Okay, I'm gonna be showing you how to put together um, this pattern for the cup and kind of showing you what it looks like. Um, this is the pattern I used and I did include one in the assignment, just as a PDF in the sketches, and I'll put a new one in here. Um, you should know how to throw a slab from the previous assignment, right? Your dishes. Make sure that you're taking your rib or your credit card. I have a red rib here, but you have your credit card and really compressing that clay. You certainly, if the adult in your household lets you and you have a rolling pin, you certainly can use a rolling pin. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut this out. You guys at home, we made those pin tools. Um, I'm actually just gonna use my tongue depressor that I cut. Um, I'm sorry, not cut, but sanded. But your pin tool works well too. So I cut this out and I'm gonna lay it on the slab. And this works for any kind of cup, any kind of slab cup you're making. Remember, this is gonna be a square bottom and a round top. The extra then I would ball up, but I do need a part for the bottom. So sometimes I'll save a little bit for the bottom and ball it up and if it got dry again, dip it in water. And so now I'm gonna take and cut the darts out. Like my slab was a little bit thick, but that's okay. It allows me some room to stretch it out. And your cups don't have to be paper thin. Now, one thing I didn't do is texturize it. So I think I'm gonna take my, and I could have done this before. Um, it all depends on what you want your cup to look like. So I'm just gonna take my roller and roll it. And if you have to recut it after texturizing it, you certainly can do that. This texture is pretty subtle. I couldn't find the roller I wanted to use. I'll put them somewhere and I don't know where. So this one I'll have to do. Okay, so now I'm gonna check it. Still looks pretty good. And then what I do is I'm going to thin down the one side. Now you can also cut it at an angle, but I usually overlap these sides. So I'm gonna thin that down and then I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing to this side. 
You can see that hard clay is actually really good for slab building. So if your clay is getting harder, that's good. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut one of these angles, one of these sides at an angle. So they go to better together just a little bit better. And I'm just doing the same ang the same side on every triangle as an angle. So the other side's gonna stay flat. Okay, now you'll need your water and your scoring tool. I'm going to tip it upside down and put it together. So I'm going to look at it and I'm going to overlap it here. So I'm going to take my scoring tool and I'm going to score both sides in the same direction. Both sides in the same direction. And I'm going to take a little bit of water, put it on there. If you have a paintbrush, great. Q-tip works. Actually, maybe I should have put Q-tips in your bag. And now I'm going to overlap them. Sometimes I'll just put water on one side. It actually works a little bit better to put water just on one side. Okay, same date construction. We're just using water. So now I'm going to go ahead and score these angles. Score. And then I'm going to put water, this time just on one side, and I'm going to push it together. OK, I'm going to do all the other angles. Okay, now you see I've gotten it together. I've ruined my texture a little bit, so you can always go back in when you're done and kind of fix up that texture. Works pretty well. Um, you can roll over this a little bit. I don't know that I would blend it completely. It's like the seam on your jeans. You're always gonna see it, but it tells you how it was put together. So I'm not gonna hide that completely, but I am gonna go through and kind of roll some of these seams to make sure they're nice and together. Um, okay, so now I have to put the bottom on. So what I'm going to do for the bottom is I'm going to kind of flatten out this surface so that I have a little more surface to attach to. So I'm pushing down that edge just a little bit, softening that sharp edge, and then you can shape it the way you want to. I'm going to put a little bit of water on it so that I can see where to cut my slab. And I'm going to take my leftover slab that I saved. And I'm going to flip it over, kind of push down, and then now I can see um, the slab to cut around. So now what I'm going to do is score that. Put a little water on it and flip it over onto here. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to kind of rock it around, make sure it's nice and on there and push it down on the inside. If you can't reach, you can use your popsicle stick or your tongue depressor to blend that bottom. Also, the end of your spork might work well for this. To kind of smooth and make sure that's nice and blended. Okay, so now I have to clean this up a little bit. So I'm actually going to take and cut some of this bulk off around and then blend it in a little bit. Okay, now that I have the bottom on and I'm going to put a little foot on it um, so that it stands a little nicer, but I have to work on this edge. 
So for this edge, I'm going to take uh, and just sort of pinch it out. It's a little narrow, and I want that drinking edge to be nice and thin. So I'm going to take and pinch that out. Now, next up, we'll talk about handles, um, but your handle might be your theme. Or maybe you don't want to use this cup. Maybe your whole cup's your theme. Maybe you want to think about the texture that you have on there. Um, but this is just another option for a cup. Remember that the other pattern I showed you was this, and you would do the same thing. You just wouldn't do the darts, right? So same exact way, except not the darts. If I wanted to make this cup, again, the same way, but you wouldn't have the darts. You just overlap that seam and then put it on there and um, compress it. You can also take a wet finger inside of a slab cup and just kind of push it out. So if you feel like you need it to have a little more volume, a little more shape, you can continue to shape this. And like I said, I'll continue to work on this and show you what it looks like uh, when we put a foot on it. Okay, so I have my cup here and I wanna just show you how I put a foot on it, a square foot, um, to lift it up a little bit so it sits in the saucer a little nicer. So I'm gonna start with a coil. And I'm going to score around where I want that foot to be. I'm just flattening out one side so it has a little nicer of an attachment on there. So I pushed that down and flattened it out a little bit. Put some water on there. Just one side would be enough. And I'm gonna score this side in the same direction that I scored the other side. So now when I put it on there, I'm gonna pinch it onto there. And then I have it cut at a little bit of an angle. So I'm gonna push that together. So I'm kind of making a little bit of a triangle profile where it's thinner at the top and thicker where it attaches. Then I'm going to take my popsicle stick or my tongue depressor and just push down and make sure that it has a nice edge there that it's attached to. Now, if you can find something square in your house, sometimes something square works really nice for this. And it also works nice for in here. Sometimes I'll push down I don't have something square, so I'm just going to work with these corners with what I have. And then I'm going to flip it over and do it the other way. So if you sanded your popsicle stick into a square, that would really help in these corners here. So now what I have is a bottom with a foot on it that looks, looks pretty good. It'll sit up a little higher and then I want to level it out. So it'll sit up a little higher. I'll be able to get a nice handle on there and um, it'll fit into my tray just a little bit better. Okay, next up, your saucer.